Port Elgin United Church. Good morning and welcome to worship at Port Elgin United Church. I'm Reverend Heather McCarroll and I welcome you here on our Sunday of Joy. And we have with us Brenda Manderson who will lead us through our hymns and through the service you're going to hear as you already have kind of a host of other musicians that are here at Port Elgin United Church. We thank Dave and Maria for running the AV booth for us today. And we have Laura Van Berlo who will be reading the scriptures. And it's especially a, a big occasion for Laura. She's here to read the scriptures on the day of her grandson's baptism. And so we are so thrilled to have Laura with us and to have Samson come along and he brought his parents with him. And so this is going to be a day of great joy for us. Now, if you receive our newsletter, then you will have already received what we're doing for our candle lighting for the uh, pink candle on our Advent wreath, the candle of joy. And it's my hope that you have a candle with you. And if you'd like, you can recite this beautiful liturgy with me. So light one candle for joy because the world is broken and the wait is long, but our joy cannot be contained. Like a toddler toppling the thrones of power with a gleeful swipe, joy pierces our silence with song, interrupts our sighing with laughter, unshackles our fumbling feet to dance. My soul magnifies the Lord, she whispers, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So we light one candle because it only takes one candle. Christ with us. Give us joy for the world we are aching. Give us joy for ourselves we pray. Give us joy in Give us joy to live your way. Light a candle, light a candle, light a candle while we wait and pray. Light a candle, light a candle, joy was born on Christmas Day. And so now I will ask the family to come forward for the baptism. And I'll ask you to pick up the mic so you have it handy. We need that and just about to end the phone. Do you want to have it with you? We're doing the baptism truly in a uh, pandemic way. The godparents will be joining us or have already joined us through uh, the, the telephone and speakerphone. Mm -hmm. Where are they coming from? Uh, they're in London. Oh, well, Strathroy, technically. Right? In Strathroy. So <laughs> <laughs> this is why we have all this modern technology and we're very, very thankful for it. And so today we are so grateful to have with us Tyler, Rebecca, and Samson. So the sacrament of baptism proclaims and celebrates the grace of God. By water and the spirit we are called, claimed, and commissioned. We are called God's own, welcomed as children of God. We are claimed by Christ and we are united with Christ. And through our baptism we become part of the body of Christ. So on behalf of the congregation of Port Elgin United Church, I present Samson James Claro Burden for the initiation into the body of Christ through baptism, son of Tyler and Rebecca, and little brother to Faith and Leo. So are you ready now for the quiz? And you guys can use the mic too then. So do you believe in God, source of love, in the teachings of Jesus Christ, love incarnate, and in the presence of the Holy Spirit, love's power? We do. I do, by the grace of God. I do, by the grace of God. And trusting the gracious mercy of God, do you seek to resist evil and to live in love and justice? I will, God being my helper. I will, God being my helper. And will you encourage Samson by your words and actions and walk with him throughout life, pointing out the presence of God's blessing and teaching him to live with respect in God's creation? I will, God being my helper. I will, God being my helper. 
Now, Amanda and Cameron, are you there? <laughs> so, will you support and encourage Samson, trusting that you are not alone, you live in God's world? I will, God be, well, God be my helper. Okay. And I'll ask the family members that are present if you would please stand. Will you support Tyler, Rebecca, Faith, Leo, and Samson as they grow together? Thank you, you may be seated. So as a representative of this congregation, I pledge to these persons our welcome and our care. As a baptized and baptizing people, we commit ourselves to uphold you in prayer within the community of faith. And may God grant us all the grace to live out our baptism, amen. And as is the tradition in the United Church, when we baptize, we recite the new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone, thanks be to God. Now before I go into the actual act of baptism, I'm just gonna go put my mask on. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we mark you with the cross, for you will forever belong to the body of Christ. And we'll lay our hands over Samson. And dear Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit shall forever surround and uphold Samson. May he know of your presence, your wisdom, your joy, and your protection. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so what you'll be presented with today which are here for you, is a candle which represents the light of Christ. May it shine for Samson throughout his life. There's a cuddle bear that represents the pastoral care of this church that will surround all of you, a Bible for his Christian education, and a certificate of his baptism and membership within the body of Christ. I'm hoping... So Samson, we welcome you as a member of God's family. We welcome you with love that you may learn to love. We welcome you with joy that you may learn Christ's joy. And we welcome you by your name so that you may know who you are. And we welcome you in Christ's name so that you may know whose you are. You are part of the family of Christ and you will always find a place of welcome here at Port Elgin United Church. So those of us who are present, we say welcome. And you can take these with you as you go. Thank you. It is such a treat for us to have Samson here today for baptism. And we thank the godparents for phoning in. It's a wonderful way that we can be together. And, and this is Advent and Christmas season will be full of us getting together through all of those kind of technology. And so I thank you. And now, Grandma, if you want to come up and share the scriptures with us.
Today's reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. In this passage, we hear of Jesus' birth and the arrival of an angel to the shepherds. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. May we be blessed by today's reading of God's holy word. Shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around. Fear not, said he, for mighty dread had seized their troubled mind. Let tidings of great joy I bring to you and all. Well, today's baptism of Samson is especially meaningful on this third Sunday of Advent, this Sunday of joy. I have to admit that I love that we have babes coming forward to be baptized, but gosh, do I ever miss being able to hold them and be able to put the water on and mark the cross. But those days are coming. The, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel is getting brighter every day now. And so I thank you for bringing Samson today. What a treat it's been for all of us. To have Samson come here today so that we can mark him as a child of God and a member of the body of Christ is of even greater significance today because those that Laura just read about in our scriptures, the shepherds, of all of the parts played in the, uh, in the original nativity, they're the ones who actually understand the greatest significance of what has happened here today. I mean, there they were, the shepherds watching their flock of sheep, protecting them from predators, just like any other night of the year. Then suddenly, out of nowhere, the angels appear and they announce the greatest news of all news of all time. And it really freaked out the shepherds. They were very afraid. But things aren't always as they appear. You see, the usual version that we have here, the usual version that the minister now shares with you, with you is that these shepherds, is that they were poor, that they were dirty, and it usually follows up with the idea that the angels appeared to them because it was God's design to first appear to the least of these. That by appearing to them first, the message is conveyed that this Christ child was sent to reach the have-nots of society before appearing before the authorities because it was these that God was most concerned with. Well, it would be partially true. Jesus, of course, had and still has a heart for those who are downcast and those who are hurting, those who are pushed off to the side. And he has a heart and a love for everyone. Scholarship has taught us that these shepherds that are in this passage of Luke that Laura read today, they were not outcasts of society. The shepherds we read about in Luke were actually fulfilling temple duties on temple land and they were the only ones who could perform temple duties on temple lands were those who belonged to the temple. 
we now know with authority that they were temple shepherds, that they were a form of the priesthood of that day. And we know this because of the Mishnah. Now, the Mishnah is a group of documents that record oral traditions that, that governed the Jewish people during the time of Jesus' birth. And in these documents, it's clear that the fields that these shepherds were on was temple grounds. Now, why would the temple have its own shepherds? And why would the temple have their own flock of sheep? And why would the temple have their own trained shepherds? Well, it's because these were no ordinary sheep. These sheep were intended to be the sacrifice for Passover. So it was the duty of these highly trained shepherds to ensure that these lambs were without blemish and were completely unharmed before being sacrificed. Now, another statement in the Mishnah says that the Messiah would be revealed from the tower of the flock. And we now know for a fact that there actually was a tower right in the middle of these fields and that it was a lookout so the priests, they could go up and look out over all of the flock at once. And it was these temple shepherds' job to stay in that tower all night. So with the tower being so tall, the temple shepherd was, just like it said in the passage today, watching over the flock by night. And there were other temple shepherds who were on the ground, and they were also keeping watch. So these shepherds stayed in the fields continually. This was their ministry. This was their job, their duty. So they most likely were kind of dirty, but they were not a group of poor shepherds. Their service to the church leaders, the Pharisees, it elevated their social status. These were men who were dedicated to the study of scriptures and to the traditions of the Jewish faith. They knew what had been predicted by the prophets, and these shepherds were trained in ritual shepherding. For instance, I thought this was the most, most interesting part of the whole thing, was that when one of these sheep of this tribe, of this flock of sheep, went into labor, they didn't give birth out in the fields like other sheep would do. These sheep were then brought into a, uh, inside into a uh, stable. They were birthed on fresh straw, and then they were wrapped in swaddling cloths that were always prepared and brand new and fresh and ready to go. And this was to protect and keep the lambs safe. The quality of the shepherding was based on how safe and protected the lambs were kept. See, these lambs had to be without injury or blemish. And if they were, it proved that this shepherd was a really good shepherd. So when the shepherds found baby Jesus wrapped in these same swaddling cloths, it was a sign that only they would recognize with certainty that the Messiah had been born, the Lamb of God that one day would be sacrificed like a lamb for all humankind, exactly what the prophets had predicted. And so it isn't surprising that after the shepherds saw Jesus with their own eyes, the Bible says they returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard. I just love the way Eugene Peterson puts this in the, in the message. He says, the shepherds let loose, glorifying and praising God. So today, may all of the joy of Samson's baptism, the witness and proclamation of the shepherds, and the nearness that we are to the birth of Christ cause all of us to let loose with praise and fill us all with great joy. Let us pray. Well, dear Holy God, when we are washed in the waters of baptism, new life in Christ is claimed for us. Yet we don't always remember to live as one saved and claimed by God. Instill in us a desire to claim our baptism again so our lives truly reflect who we claim to be as Christians. Open our hearts to help and serve others, to be bold witnesses like the shepherds were to your redeeming grace and your great joy that is for all. It is our hope and our prayer that through our actions and our words, the people we encounter will see you in us. This we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
And so now we have the opportunity to offer back to the Lord our resources and ourselves. For as God has blessed us both spiritually and materially, as God has been generous with us, let us be generous in return. Let us be joyful givers. We give you but your own, whatever the gift may be. And so we pray, God of all creation, we present these monetary gifts as well as our very selves to you. It is our prayer that our gifts would be blessed to bring about more of your joy in this world. Amen. And we'll now move into our very final one, which is absolutely remarkable. No town, no blessed at this church with incredible musicians. We thank both the bell choir and all of those in our virtual choir for today as well as with for Brenda. So may the Lord bless you and make your joy to overflow for each day and every day this week and always. Amen. Shall be strong and none shall be.